there guys, my name is Curse Shad Longstaborn, but built for Theme Park News, and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom update where today we have some potential, well, not potentially, it is very sad news, uh, but potentially exciting news for the future because, of course, uh, of replacements and things like that. But the sad news, the main part of the news is sad, and that is that Bakken, which is a classic amusement park in Denmark, uh, have announced the closure of their racing coaster which is their Ziera Flitzer. Now these Flitzers are you know starting to you know pop out and go into extinction soon. Um, there's only a few left in the world so they're pretty much in an extinction state in terms of coasters and you know we're going to be sharing the official statement. I've translated it from Danish to English so I'm going to share with you guys uh, the statement officially put out on their Facebook. I've left the Facebook post link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. And um, after that statement, I'll be predicting what's going to happen to the site, what could happen to the site. And uh, I wouldn't expect a coaster, but I've got a couple of predictions just in case. Uh, but I do have some other predictions as well. So before we get started, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. I've got more of these news updates. We uploaded a lot of news updates. I think we uploaded about 9 or 10 news updates over the last two days alone, which is crazy but there was a lot of news out of that time um but this is probably the start of like the the cool down period hopefully for a few days just to you know give give me a chance to upload some of your video suggestions speaking of video suggestions if you've got some or if you've got some merchandise to send in i want to film a merch update in a few days time then uh, send them in to the usual social media links instagram twitter snapchat i'm trying to get good on twitter now so please Follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm considering TikTok. I mean, comment down below if you want me to do TikTok as well. I, I mean, if you guys want me to, I'll do it. But, um, you know, if you guys want me to do TikTok, then uh, comment down below. And then in the next videos, I'll leave a link to my TikTok as well. Um, and for now, guys, let's get into talking about Bakken. And let's talk about the official uh, social media statement from Facebook. But I'm sure it's all over the rest of their social media. Uh, from the closure of their Sierra Flitzer Coaster Racing. So the official statement, and again the Facebook post is linked in the description down below, reads as follows in the English translation. After 48 years, racing is ready for the final round. Are you going to make one last trip? One of Bakken's most iconic rides is soon past. When we close down for the summer season next Sunday, September 13th, racing has served its military service after almost five decades. However, you can still manage to get the final rides in on the ride. All next weekend, so the 11th to the 13th September, so across those three days, racing will be nicely decorated and on this special occasion, trips will be sold at the same price as when the track first came to Bakken back in 1972. Namely, 5 DKK per trip, so you can pay 60p per ride, which is the original price when the Bakken first opened. Now, of course, Relico State Space says it originally opened in 1971. It travelled with a showman called Rudolph between 1971 and 1974, even though it said it opened in 1972. So I'm guessing that it's travelled in the past with Rudolph between 71 and 74, but it became a, per a more permanent addition to the park in 1972. So I'm guessing it was like a temporary thing for part of the season in 1971, and then the official opening was 1972, and of course it still travelled until 1974, and then it became a 100% permanent coaster in 1975. I think that's my theory on why the opening dates are different. So this is a one minute ride experience, no inversions of course, however one important thing to note, and this ties into the predictions that I've got, is that Flitzers or other theme parks were replaced by coasters. I've got two examples. Uh, so Playland's Castaway Cove replaced theirs with the LSM triple launch coaster Gale Force. Of course, we all know that story. And uh, Silvermine at Freisig Park Pallone in Germany replaced theirs with a Mac Big Dipper known as Dynamite. And that was only, you know, you know, last year. That was only 2019. So that was a more recent addition. So... Uh, this ties into my predictions. I've got three coaster predictions and I've got three non-coaster predictions. So let's get into talking about them right now. So there we go. That is looking at the official statement of from Bakken on the closure of racing the Sierra Flitzer roller coaster uh, after you know f you know five decades of service. It's a long-serving coaster, and you know Bakken's one of those classic amusement parks. They keep the classic feel for as long as they can. And, uh, you know, we don't know why it's closed yet. We don't know if it's anything to do with the mechanisms. We don't know if it's just, you know, 
just five decades of service. That's it. It's time to move on. Uh, we don't know exactly what the theories are, what the theory, what the actual, you know, rumored talks are, why it's closed. But I've got a feeling it is just, you know, five decades serviced. It's time to move on. I think it's nothing to do with the ride itself. I think the ride works perfectly. Otherwise, there won't be, you know, opening it, you know, in its final weekend and closing it officially on the 13th of September. So you guys can go and experience that for yourselves if you're down there in Denmark between the 11th and 13th September. 60p per ride, which is very, very good. Uh, and of course the massive lighting package. So if any of you Danish viewers are out there, send some footage into the channel via Instagram, Snapchat, um, you know, Twitter if you want to message me the video footage or I've got my email in the about section of the channel so you can email me the footage itself and I can upload it to here if you guys are down there and I'll give you credit as well. So, let's talk about predictions then. So I've got three coaster predictions and three non-coaster predictions. So let's start off with our coaster predictions. So I've got three coaster predictions. We've got the SNS 4D free spin, hear me out, <laughs> uh, the Premier Skyrocket 2 and the Intamin LSM Vertical Launch Coaster. Now that is the brand new concept that we talked about in that Intamin video. I predicted it for a couple of other parks maybe, uh, but I want to talk about exactly why I've predicted these three coasters. So let's start off with the 4D free spin. We all know what a 4D free spin is. Those of you who don't, it's essentially your fourth dimension coaster, but it's quite, it's compact, extremely compact footprint. Um, Around you know the usual layout, the prototype layout is six free flying versions, and you know it's just it's just record hang time, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, you know, obviously, if back and were to do this, I think that you know, I think with all the coaster editions, I think you're not just looking at racing being replaced here. If you look on your screen right now, find Abby Dozer, you've got a Google Earth image, uh, and that shows you. Uh, that I've put the blue uh, rectangle in the two buildings next to it, so those two buildings would have to be removed if it was to be a roller coaster replacement. So uh, I think if a 4D free spin or the other two came in as replacements, then I think you'd be looking at the two buildings next to it being destroyed as well as racing. Uh, and I think racing's not going anywhere. I th I, well, it's not going to another park. I think it is going to be scrapped uh, unless it's you know unless a park wants it. But going back to topic, the 4D free spin now. You've got to look at Adventureland in Iowa. They're not the biggest theme park in the world. They're one of the smaller USA parks on scale, and they've just got and got an SNS 40 free spin for next year called Dragon Slayer. So this will obviously be Europe's first free spin roller coaster. It'll be the first one of its kind in Europe, so I think that it would be a good record for Backen to have, and it'd be a great way to move forward. And uh, they can give it a good classic theme here. They could maybe pay homage to the racing coaster and do a raceway theme and maybe call it Racing, Racing Unleashed, or something like Final Lap and just pay homage to racing with the theming around it, um, or like just the theme of the coaster itself. So I think there's a real homage to pay tribute to with the potential replacement of a 4D free spin uh, and the raceway theme they could put into it and, you know, the name they could go with. And, you know, the colour scheme, again, they could go with a nice raceway colour scheme, not the actual colour scheme of the Flitzer coaster itself, but maybe like a raceway colour scheme just to pay homage to the name racing of the old coaster. Um, so I think that a 4D free spin would be a unique addition to Europe. I think it would be a unique addition to Bakken. Um... I'll go on about opening years at the end of the video because I've got some predictions about if a replacement could open, when will it open. Uh, so I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Second coaster then is the Premier Skyrocket 2. Now you're looking here at um, many different types of Skyrocket 2. You're looking at Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, uh, which replaced their old uh, Gerslas Spinning Coaster, I believe. Um, you've also got the zombie ride at Bosque Mexico, uh, in Mexico, of course. Uh, <laughs> so the Premier Skyrocket 2, very simple layout, uh, launch back, launch forward, launch back, then you do a full launch, and then you go up into the, you know, twist up, into that slow barrel roll at the top, then you come down into the non-inverted loop, and then back into the station, then you roll back. Uh, forwards and backwards into the station. So, you know, it's a very, very easy layout to discuss. And, um, you know, I think that this, again, is a compact footprint coaster. I think it would work absolutely with the park. I think it would be fantastic. I think it would be a great ride. Um, they could make, maybe break some records with it. Maybe make it the world's tallest, fastest, longest Skyrocket 2. So maybe not the usual 
uh, prototype layout like Super Mario Ultimate Flight or the Zombie Ride or Sky Scream at Holiday Park in Germany for a more European example. Um, maybe they don't go with the usual uh, prototype, maybe they go for a taller, faster, longer one, of course with the fastest launch. So I think they could break records with this potential coaster type and again it's not the, the most expensive one in the world. Again it's a compact footprint so it would work with the racing coaster and the two buildings demolished next to it. So I think it would be a good replacement for that area. Finally then, the Intamin LSM Vertical Launch Coaster. Now, if this park invests in that, then it would be the first of its kind in the world, unless no park does it first. Now, obviously, this would be a fantastic addition to the park. I think the one thing that would probably doubt that from happening is probably the fact that it is a brand new concept. And I think that is because, you know, new concepts usually are the more expensive option. And I think that what we're looking at here is... You know, a, I think what we're looking at here is more of an existing concept because it's cheaper than, you know, new concepts that can be brought to life for the first time. Sometimes that isn't the case, but I think that in this case, maybe it could be. Uh, but if, it, if they can afford it, I would go for it because it, obviously I spoke about it in that intimate concept video. I spoke about how great it looks and I spoke about how, you know, brilliant it looks and how it operates and things like that. So I think that they're going to have a really good shout here with this particular type of coaster. Um, so that's looking at three coaster types. Now what about the three non-coaster types? Well, I've gone for two types of frisbee ride and a different type of attraction. So I think they could go with and... You know, the two frisbee rides could replace racing alone. The Zampella Discovery Revolution or the Intamin Gyro Swing. Now, I'm going to speak about those two first before I go on with my third choice. Now, the Intamin Gyro Swing or Zampella Discovery Revolution. Either one I would be happy with because, yes, it's not a coaster, but it would mean you have to keep the two buildings next to you and you'd have this nice big swing ride swinging over... Uh, the tree line and swinging over the other way across the pathway of the park and I think you've got some clever interactions you could do there and again you could give it a nice raceway theme like a turbo boost kind of theme uh, and give it a nice raceway colour scheme and a nice queue line to go with it uh, so I think that you know there's real potential here with either the Discovery Revolution or the Gyro Swing me personally with European parks and the patterns they've gone with with buying frisbee rides in recent years I would go with the gyro swing obviously to Joe Summerland they went with Tigeren uh, in 2019 which is their Intamin gyro swing uh, low key which is of course at Leesburg in Sweden uh, just a few years ago back in 2017 the year before their being on dive coast of Valkyria in the new myths and legends section so I think that a gyro swing is the more European option to go through I think the, the Zampilla discoveries whether it's Discovery Revolution whether it's a giant discovery a giga discovery the discoveries from Zamperla are more the American Six Flags option. So I think I would go with the Gyro Swing personally. Um, now the third option is a dart ride, interactive or multimedia. Now the way this would work is you'd have to combine the buildings together or you'd demolish everything in that site, the two buildings and the racing coaster, and send that off if it is being relocated to somewhere else. And with that site you would create a brand new build, massive building from scratch. Uh, you would have the building that hosts the ride and then you'd have a massive facade in front of it So it kind of hides it a bit. So uh, this is the most unlikeliest of options But I mean in, in terms of what we're talking about here in terms of types of dart rides I'd like to see a flying theater at the park. I think that would be great um, And it doesn't even have to be like the most complex of dart rides It could be something like the the Lego factory adventure where it's a nice simple trackless multimedia dart ride uh, that's going into Legoland New York next year. I spoke about that in more detail in a previous video a few days ago. So you can check that out. Um, but EFT ride systems and Holobis come together, do the nice technology, minimise people, bring them into the park and do like a nice tour round back in as a, as a small person or look at the... Like like a big earth kind of theme. Like you're being shrunk... You can use the Holovis technology that they're using for the Lego Factory Adventure and make you feel like you've been shrunk down and you get to walk with giants that kind of thing that would be a nice magical thing to go for for back end. so i think that a flying theater or one of those holovis eft ride systems connections eft ride systems connections uh to bring you into the multimedia dart ride experience so but i think that's the most l least likely of the three options of non-coaster additions i think that the frisbee ride would be a more simple fit so 
If I was to pick one from each, I would go with either a Intamin Gyroswing or I would go with an SNS 4D free spin coaster. Now, I know some people are going to allude me to something. What about, now this is just a theory, and I'm not talking about the massive outstretched time travel at Silver Dollar City, I'm talking about the original compact footprint concept that was first shown uh, a couple of years ago when this concept was first unleashed. What about the Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster? Now I know what you guys are going to say. First of all, they've got Tornado, which is their um, Gerslar Spinning Coaster, uh, their Intamin Spinning Coaster, sorry. I keep thinking it's Gerslar, but it's not, it's Intamin, but the, the trains are similar style, aren't they? <laughs> um, they've got Tornado, first of all. Now I would consider that more of a family spinning coaster. The Extreme Spinning Coaster would be the thrilling compact one. Now like I said, probably not likely. Um, but I think that would be possibly my underrated underdog bonus option because even though it's very expensive I think it would break ground for the part now of course that will probably not happen So I would stick with my 40 free spin prediction because it's cheaper and you know with Dragon Slayer going in Adventureland Many other parks in similar scale to Adventureland can add one Some people are gonna say well if you look at the site you've got the two buildings you've got racing uh, maybe you could outstretch it to the front a bit and you could do like a, a custom small Raptor coaster because it's very, very cheap. And I'm like, I, I get your point, but maybe not. I mean, it's like saying putting a map power splash in. I measured the site and I don't think a map power splash would be anywhere near fitting for the site. Same with the Raptor. I think that's too small. So I would go with a 4D free spin. It's compact. It's thrilling. It gives you wing style seats, which is a different, unique seat style for the park. And like I said, it'd be Europe's first free spin coaster. So that's what I would predict. But I think looking on the base of it, I would think the more realistic option, but only by about 5% uh, difference, I think the more realistic option would be probably the gyro swing. I think a gyro swing would be good for the park. I think it'd be fantastic for the park. And also it means you get to keep the two buildings at the side of it. So you can just theme it up a bit to make it look like part of this new like mini area or mini plaza with the new ride. So I think that a Jarus will be perfect for the park. So there we go. So that's talking about possible replacements for racing. But um, obviously, before we can you know look to the future, we've got to still remember the past. And of course, on the on the 13th September, but between the weekend of the 11th to the 13th September 2020, and then finishing up on the 13th September, um, it's your last rides on racing. R.I.P. Racing. Um, you know, 1972 to 2020, I mean, you know, five decades in service nearly is is crazy, which is mad. And, you know, big props to Backen for making such a heartfelt and unfortunate decision. I mean, like I said, there was nothing wrong with the ride unless they wouldn't reopen it. So I think it's just a moving on to the future kind of thing where it's operated for nearly five decades. It's had its time. So you've got to move on and look to the future. So what, what, what future that would be, I don't know. But... I'm very excited potentially to see what Bakken could do with that site. So, thank you very much guys for watching this theme park news update from Bakken and the closure of racing. Like I said, it closes on Sunday the 13th of September 2020. If you're there in Denmark, book your tickets to Bakken and uh, go and ride this coaster for yourself. 60p per ride, because of course, you know, the rides have tokens. And, um, you know, you pay for those tokens. And, you know, the fact that it's translated to 60p per ride, this one is incredible or 60p per trip as they call it uh so thank you very much guys make sure you like the video if you've loved it make sure you comment down below your thoughts and opinions what do you want to see replace racing at backend uh leave your comments and your thoughts down below uh make sure you subscribe to the channel for more theme park newsroom updates make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss a youtube video we are getting closer and closer to 2,000 subscribers each and every day so thank you so much for that i'm really appreciative of that and, uh, yeah, I think we're getting closer and closer to 500,000 views across all our videos as well. Half a million! I can't believe it! And for now, guys, my name is Coast Child YouTube channel, Donkster Born, but built for theme park news. Keep living the coast of life, and I'll see you guys next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.